Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back here on Mark's Aquatics. It's nearly the new year, and what we're going to do on this little video is we're going to make a filter. Okay, it's going to be a nice little filter which is going to go in between your canister filter and your tank from your return pipe straight through there, through media, and then return back into your tank. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap this off, okay, with some internal baffles. We're going to fill it up with BioHome, and then we're going to cap it off. I'm going to be doing all this work on the laser cutter and we're going to make something which should reduce our nitrates by a nice little colonization of denitrification um, bacteria, some aerobic and anaerobic, mostly anaerobic bacteria hopefully we're going to colonize in this and um, we're going to make the water go through it very slow. Now the reason why you don't get a good anaerobic bacteria colony in a canister filter, it's because they the water moves so fast that it never gets really time to establish. You do get sun, but not as much as we would like in a canister filter to do a correct job of getting rid of that nitrate in the water, okay? So it needs to be going a lot slower. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna be a tee off from the main from the main filter, okay? And it's gonna go in here, but it's gonna be a tee off from your main line. So it's gonna be going through there nice and slow, and that's where your colony of uh, anaerobic bacteria is going to start to grow in there. We get a lovely colony going in there and that will take those nitrates right the way down and hopefully give you that full cycle that we're looking for. Um, obviously depending on the big and how big your tank is and things like that. I'm going to make this one out of acrylic because I've got it but it could be made out of various other things that you could simply make yourself if you wanted to make one yourself. Various different containers and different things you could make these out of and they should be really successful. I've got uh, this one I'm going to be sending to Richard from Pond Guru and he's going to be testing it out on one of his canister filters because I don't run canister filters here in my little outfit it's all um, sponge filters and um, and power filters of different sites different types so um, I'm going to be sending it down to him and he's going to be doing a trial on it and a test on it okay so uh, I'll link the video and uh, we can check it out then let's start building right okay guys we're back on the bench got the old laptop out here, we've got our clear tube, like I say it's 400mm long this one, and it's 60mm across there, okay, in fact I think the internal diameter is 60mm, but that's not to worry, I've got some black pieces here as well, black piece of sheet, and I've also got a piece of 10mm thick acrylic as well in a sheet. Right guys, what I've done is if you look on the laptop now you can see I've got two circles made out with lots of little holes where the water is going to go through and what that's going to do with the pipe, that's going to be sat inside this ring here as you'll see, we'll have to put those in and we'll have to glue them inside you could use sponges in there but I'd rather something which is a bit more resilient because this is going to be a sealed unit so afterwards you can take it off and rinse it through with water and nothing's going to degenerate in there over time so I thought I'd uh, do it this way you could also do this like I say you haven't got to have a drill for it you can have a drill I've got my pillar drill here which I've used in the past to drill all these little holes and done things like this in the past so it's, you can do it in other various ways as well if you fancy having a go at it but now this is all plugged in I've got to go into my cutting program now and you can hear that just fire up there, it's on cutting. I got it on uh, inside first. So what it's gonna basically do is cut all the small holes out first. Okay, I'll just move you and set you up over the other side. Right, we're all set up on the printer now, so I'll start this off and then I'll speed it up for you so you can see it all cut out. It's a little bit glary, I'm sorry guys, because of the, uh, I've got my big light on the side there because it's quite dark in here today. It's a, mis it's a miserable old day outside, so I'll press uh, start on this, and hopefully we'll be underway. What the laser normally does, it normally calculates what it's got to do, goes through the program, and there you go, it starts to cut the holes out. It'll cut various places. And obviously this is fairly thick. 
So it's probably going to take a couple of goes to actually go through it. This is normal speed, how it cuts through. But I think we're going to have to go all over this twice. Because it's only a 40 watt CO2 laser, it won't cut directly through. I think that's about four mil, four or five mil acrylic that, so it's going to take some time to go through it. But it'll get there, especially when we got high prolapse. So let's get speedy lasering. Right guys, what I've done is I've cut out the two pieces now, like you just saw. So we got that now, which is going to fit internally in there. Now I've just glued one in. It's basically what I did to do that is I, I've got another piece of acrylic pipe. And I put that in there like that. And that just slides over the top. And that gives me my height that I need. Okay. But I'll do that on the side angle and that'll help it stay in position you see sorry just like that and then what I do is I just add the glue in but I need it's taking a bit of a bit of a fiddle but we can have the two bits in there now like that so our media once the other ends glued in it'll be easier at this end because I've got to pack it with the media first, so that's going to have to go into the, into there. So that bit is solidly glued in there, all the way around. Okay, and I use tensile for that. I'll show you that one that I've got, wherever it is. I've got a big bottle of it here. That's the one I use, tensile 12. And that is a thicker liquid, it's so, because this is, there was a couple of thou out, because the laser obviously got to allow for that. And I took a little bit more off there than I was hoping to. But it'll fit. It's only like a prototype thing anyway, this one. So I've used the thicker adhesive for, um, I'll leave that there. And another one I use as well is that one as well. Okay. 16 by Side Grip Acrylics. I'll put that one there as well so you can see it. If you want to get yourself anything at any time, that's the stuff that I use. It's very good. So we've got that piece there already glued in. So now what I've got up on the computer screen is a 60mm ring, which is going to be the end caps for this. And also this bit of 10mm pipe, which I've got in the centre there, okay? So that's going to go through the middle of that. So we've got to cut that out now. So I'll take you over to the laser printer, which is really a cutter. I'll get it right in a minute. Right, I've just positioned you now over the print, over the, oh, the, the laser cutter. It's a printer as well, I'll get it mixed up. It's a combination machine, this one. It can do it can do either. So um, it's a handy little tool to have. A few of you have emailed me about these and um, and where I got it from. You can find them on eBay if you just type in a 40 watt CO2 laser, you'll see them come up and they're around three to four, just three and a half to four hundred pound. But if you're into stuff like I'm into with DIY and building stuff really handy to have you can have plenty of fun in your workshops with them they take a while to get used to the, the technology side of it the actual um this side of it can be quite glitchy i've had some problems with this crashing halfway through cutting something that i've taken about 20 minutes to program in and then it's just completely gone off and um, and swish itself off which is a bit annoying but there you go now i'm going to go and engrave You've got to get a cutting, like I did earlier, do the inside cut first. We've got to do the inside cut first, guys, because we want the central holes to drop out first before the outside holes. Otherwise, back to front is going to be no good at all. So the inside always first when you're doing these. Turn your laser up to full. Full bore on the old laser. 
Let's go. I'll just show you uh, how it cuts in normal time. Now you've got to obviously have a well vented area when you're using these things because the fumes that this stuff lets off is, uh, is quite toxic. So as you can see the smoke's getting drawn back through this part here which is an extractor fan which I've got through a, a vent pipe which goes outside into the fresh air. You can see it's sucking all the fumes in, it takes most of them out and you can't really smell anything in here at all really, which is quite good. Now every time it completes a circuit, it'll stop and then you've got to reset it again. So at the moment we're just cutting out the top and the bottom pieces where we're going to glue we're going to glue them on actually, we're going to completely seal them up with the media in afterwards, so I'll let this do its complete circle, it's 10 mil, so it's probably going to take about I would say maybe 5 passes to cut its way through its stage at a time, it'll cut through about 3 mil at a time all the way down, so so it's going to take around 4 passes, maybe 5 to get through this, but that's how slow it runs normally you want to keep it slow if you have got one of these and you want to do some you want to learn about it it's going to do there now right now it will just reset itself now so now we've got the start we've got the start on there i don't move it now obviously otherwise i'm going to lose position where it is um it tells you now you want to start again to do the next task which we do want it to do but i'll speed it up for you now so we can get these things cut out and we can go from there Okay guys, what we've got now is all the bits cut, we've got the other end which we've got to glue in there, we've got our two end caps now, I've done them out of quite thick acrylic comparison to the pipe, the pipe's only about 3mm, but the um, I've done the caps quite thick, I think it looks quite nice because we can flame polish those and make sure they're all nice and neat after it's all put together, and I've got the little the little sticks now which we've cut to size which now I can push in like that and there the water then once it's glued in and I push that it's going to get a nice big push through and we're going to get that nice and solid there so when we put a pipe on we've got a nice fitting to go onto where that's going to fit onto there like that so we've got two of these guys all ready to go they're nice and stiff to go in there I'll give those a press down afterwards with something. So we've got the two ends, we've got our bio gravel from the bio home gravel here which we're going to fill the tube up with. Once that's in then I'm going to insert the other end there and then now what's that, that's going to create that water edge there so that when it comes through that's going to fill up with water and then push equally through all those holes you see and then travel through the media nice and slow and exit through the other end the same way and if you ever take it off you can just literally up and down like that in some water if there is any debris which I doubt if there will be much because it's going to be on the return part of your pump so it's going to be nice clean filtered water that's going to be running through this and that only um, so I'll put this thing together got to tip some of this into it this is where I tip it all over the place and look unprofessional bit of concentration here sorry I 
for that last little bit there. And we can pack that down, give it a little shake to really push that down. And now that is completely full of our biohome gravel. And that is when we can sit the other end in, compact it down, and I can just run a little bead of glue around there of the thicker acrylic glue. That's going to hold itself in there now nice and level on it, as you can see. And I can just run a little bead around there and get that all glued up. Right guys, there you go. Now I've glued it all up now, everything's finished. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through you now what I've done. Instead of uh, you watching me do all that, I know a lot of you like to watch me do these things, but basically I've glued the ends in there, those were pressed in to the top. The top's been put on and then I've clamped it all together, compressed it both sides and then with my tensile 12, what I've done is I've just, as you've seen me make tanks before, you just literally use that capillary action and flood those joints there and there on the ends as well. That will suck itself in and, um, and then I've left that then for a couple of hours, had myself a nice coffee and uh, come back out the workshop now and it's all it's all gone off nice and solid right the way this is going to work is it's going to fit inside a cabinet inside your aquarium it could fit if you've got a sump it could work really well for that as well okay um, there's a couple of ways you can run this number one is you can get a very very small power head like this okay if you've got a sump you could literally just pop that in there now that's 10 mil pipe this is a very very small um, circulation pump okay but that is doing 200 liters an hour just that little pump and that's what we want and it's got a maximum and minimum flow on there as well Richard sent me this one a while back I haven't used it for anything yet but it's going to come in perfect for this um, little project because it fits perfectly into the base in there like that now all you've got to do now is basically stick that into your aquarium if we're into a sump turn it on it's going to push that water up through there and then it's going to overflow back down or push it up through a pipe sorry return into your tank in the top so you can have that sat in the sump like that or on another way you could do it is have it connected I'll just reset you up a minute there you go you got a lovely warm a lovely view of my horribly stained wall there which I'm gonna to have to cover up with something maybe I should do a a fan letter drawings or something on there that people can send in things and I can pin them up that could be a good idea let me know if that's something that you'd be interested to in see in that we could put something on there nice murals and stuff people have, I've had some nice things sent to me over the time nice sketches and different things that I could put up there people to show off their artwork my daughter's into her seriously into her artwork she loves drawing her fish betters and things like that um, Anyway, getting back to this, now we've got an in, your, your, your inlet's at the bottom there, so what you can do if you've got your canister filter, say my old diving helmet now is my canister filter, okay, and you've got your pipe coming down from your tank, okay, from your suction side, which is going in there, your return side is coming out of here, now what you do is you'd come across with that pipe, you'd have to split the pipe there, and you'd have to put a piece a t-piece in there so you'd have it joining onto there joining back onto there but then you'd have a little 12 mil up stand so you want it from 16 mil to 12 mil okay then you can fit a pipe to there another length of pipe and you can have a little regulating tap on it so if that's off the ground like that clip to the wall inside your cupboard with some new clips like that your pipe had come up across there, your T-piece had come up, and you'd have a little regulating valve there. So some of that pressure's bypassed to go up here. Now you can turn your valve then to work out how much water you want to go up there. Now you want it to run very slow, obviously, because the slower the water runs through there, the better it's going to work for that anaerobic bacteria to start colonizing inside that reactor and, um, and getting rid of all those horrible nitrates that we always try and get rid of in our aquarium. So, and then obviously it's going to come from there, it's going to come out the top and then back over 
over a little new bend back into your tank again and then that circulation is going to come again so that's all you need is a little tiny valve just off there to regulate how much and you can see it raising up the pipe that way okay so it's going to have to flow all the way through all that media all the way through it and you're going to get an amazing colonization of anaerobic bacteria in there to get rid of the nitrates so uh, I think that's going to be a good little job I'm going to send this one down to Richard he's going to test it out for me and um because he's got a canister filter down there. I, like I said earlier, I haven't got a canister filter. I only run pumps to my shower filters and airlift sponge filters. So, um, or I've got rear filtration systems in some of my tanks down below in, under the bench here. So um, I haven't got one. So I can't try it out. I could try it out with this, with the little pump inside a sump, inside a tank downstairs. But I think he's got the proper thing. This is what it's really designed for, was for a canister filter. So. Um, and I think it'll do an amazing job. It's going to be interesting to see. If you've got smaller tanks, obviously I haven't weighed this out. Um, I'll have to get in touch with uh, with Richard and find out. I can't remember off the top of my head how much you need of this per size aquarium. So um, I'll have to work that out. But he can weigh that and um, get a rough idea on how much is in there. And um, and go from there. It's quite funny actually. He gave me he gave me the media and now I'm giving it back to him. <laughs> and. Um, with some free acrylic tube, how about that? So I'm looking forward to him doing his little review on that. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna work really, really well. I've made similar things in the past um, with bottles, just with a Coke bottle, um, putting um, an airline, uh, an RO bulkhead through the base of the, uh, of, the, of the bottle and one through the lid. And I filled the, um, I filled the bottle up with media before and I've had those running through bottles so that is, this just looks a bit fancier that's all it's a little bit fancier than a bottle but um in, if it's in your cabinet you could put a nice led light strip behind there and it could light it up as well and make a nice little feature of it down in your cabinet so uh, anyway guys hope you like that video on my little nitrate reactor there and um as always your stars take care of yourselves love you loads and i'll see you on the next episode of mark's aquatics bye for now just me and my guitar.